welcome. <laughs> Clarence Milton Ash, born on May 23rd, 1926. He passed on March 4th, 2019. 92 years, 10 months, approximately. He was the 12th of Alfred and Dora Ash's 15 children. Before he was out of college, he met, he met and married Edna Knuckles, and that together they had four children, all of whom are present here today. Clancy is survived by his wife, Nancy, by his children, Mike and Larry, Sandy, and Keith. Also, the spouses of the children are here. There's some 20 grandchildren great-grandchildren, and one great-great-granddaughter. So there's a big army of people behind there. And then also, there are, of course, nephews and nieces and cousins and other relatives, and a great many, great, great, great many former students who remember him with either fondness or he was the hardest teacher I ever had. <laughs> but he was always fair, is one thing I can say about that. Clancy served in World War II in the U.S. Navy as part of that greatest generation, along with six of his brothers, all of whom came back from the war, which is a remarkable feat on itself. When World War II ended, he was assigned to a flagship under the Admiral, where his skill in woodworking soon was recognized. At the direction of that Admiral, Clancy built a wooden frame to house the ship's bell, which is still on display in California today. The Admiral also requested that Clancy build himself, build the Admiral a yacht. <laughs> Sorry, a yacht. <laughs> So Clancy was allowed to get off the ship on small ships and go to various islands to harvest hardwood, of which he built that, that yacht for that admiral. Upon release from the service, he returned to, to attend Santa Rosa Junior College and then Chico State University. There he earned a master's degree and a teaching certificate. In 1951, got a job at Lassen Union High School. And that's where he started his teaching career. He taught woodshop, taught math, and substituted in many classes. I can remember Clancy telling me they hated it when they found out he was going to be the substitute teacher. <laughs> he took no guff off of anybody. None whatsoever. I met Clancy. Sorry. Mr. Ash as the teacher at Inwood Redwood And I spent four years under his tutelage and four years of instruction. Five years later, I came out of the Air Force and went to last junior college, and I met his daughter, Sandy, and we were married. standard of loyalty, integrity, and love for his family, and he left us a legacy to follow in that case. And to pass
pass on to the following generation. We gather today to command his ashes to the ground as a final resting place. Here among other veterans. Oh, don't be totally sad, please. Draw on your memories of Clancy to inspire you to love one another, to love life, to love people, because that's what he would want. He would want us to continue on that way. Thank you, Clancy, for a life well lived. So as we gather today, today, gather today to honor the man, it's fitting Robert Louis Stevenson. I found that poem this morning on a on a program that will be um, down in the memorial building this afternoon. The poem describes a successful life that is fitting that we can say, quote, Clancy lived a successful life. And I'd like to read that poem right now. A man is a success who has lived well, laughed often and loved much, who has granted who has granted the respect of intelligent men and the love of children, who has filled his niche and accomplished his task, who leaves the world better than he found it. Whatever whatever by an improved copy, a perfect poem, or a rescued soul who never lacked appreciation for earth's beauty or failed to express it, who looked for the best in others and the gave the best he had. Thank you for attending this service. There will be a reception and a memorial service at the Veterans Memorial Hall across from, from the high school from 2 until 4.30. We invite every one of you to come. There's some of his favorite foods, iced tea and donuts and <laughs> things. There's pictures and there'll be a time of remembering and anybody can see Larry who's going to be there. Mass of the ceremony is a big official speech. Thank you for your attention now. I would like to turn it over to the commander of the honor guard for the rest of the service. Thank you. Good afternoon. Today's uh, ceremonial uh, ceremony will consist of some readings from us, uh, 21 gun salute, taps, and the flag presentation that will be unfolded and folded and presented. We are here assembled to pay a lasting tribute of respect to our departed comrades. When the call of our country was heard, Comrade Clarence Ash answered. Self was forgotten in the cause of the greater good. As a brave man, he marched away with an abiding faith in his God, his country, and his flag. The red of our country's flag was made redder still by his heroism, the white pure by the motives which impelled him, and in the starry field of our nation's glorious banner, the blue has been glorified by the service he has given for American ideals. May each of us, when our voyages are over, find a welcome in that region of the blessed where there is no more storm-tossed sea, nor scorching battlefield, nor dangerous skies. Our comrade is in the hands of our Heavenly Father. He will be laid to rest, but let us cherish his virtues and learn to imitate them. Reminded by the place he fills no more. That our ranks are thinning, let each one be so loyal to every virtue, so true to every friendship, so faithful in the remaining marches, that he will be ready to fall out and take his place in the great review hereafter. Not in doubt, but with faith that the merciful captain of our salvation will call him to that fraternity which on earth and in heaven remains unbroken. Let us pray. 
<clears throat> Eternal God, Supreme Commander of us all, Lord of the far-flung battle line to whom the ranks of life report, we bow before you with reverent hearts and a sublime faith, knowing that you lead us on in death as you have in life. For again, you have ordered a veteran to that realm in the west, beyond the twilight and evening star, where beauty and valor and goodness dwell forever with the unnumbered multitude. Mindful of service nobly done, you have called Clarence Ash to everlasting rest. You have sealed his lips with the fate of blossoms of springtime and the withered leaves of autumn. You have called him to eternal peace, to the land of your silent mystery. Hear now the sorrows of those who mourn, touch their tired hearts with healing. Protect them with your holy care. Keep clean and bright in memory the splendid flame that now has flickered out, and shelter us with your compassion. Lord of all life who lives forever, again you have taught us the measure of our days. We are strangers with you, and sojourners as our fathers were. Our days are as a shadow, and there is none abiding. But you abide, your years fail not, you never change. A thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. <coughs> the grass withers, the flower fades, but your word endures forever, and therein is our health and hope. You heal the broken in heart and bind up their wounds, comfort your people. In their sorrow, may there be no bitterness, no doubt of your eternal goodness. Give them to know that you do not mock us with the stubborn, hopeful life eternal, that having created and cared for us, you will not desert us to the dust, that you hold us with the love unfailing, that our dead are in your keeping, and you are able to do far more for them than all that we ask or think. Until for us also the day breaks and the shadows flee, grant us so to live that our lives may honor the veterans who have gone before us that together we may come to the city which I have prepared for those who love you and keep your commandments. For your own name's sake we pray, amen. Amen. One by one, as the years roll on, we are called upon to fulfill these sad duties of respect to our departed comrades. The present, full of the cares full of the cares that best beset all nations, whether engaged in war or peace, fades away as we look back on the day this comrade left his home to defend his country. Imbued by a spirit of devotion and inspired by an undying love of his native land, he gladly went forth and joined with comrades, both young and old, to preserve our heritage of freedom. We trust that the example set by our comrade will prove a glorious beacon to the youth of our country who may be called to uphold the honor of our flag. As the years roll on, we too shall have finished our flight, shall be laid to rest, and our souls forever belong column to the realms above. Comrades, let us so live that when the keeper of the eternal records shall have called our names for the last time, those we leave behind may say of us, as we say now of this comrade. Here lies all that is mortal of a true-hearted comrade and a fearless defender of his country and flag. Let us pray. <clears throat> Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servants and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of Clarence Ash, your servant. In the sight of this world, he is now dead. In your sight, may he live forever. Forgive whatever sins he may have committed through human weakness, and in your goodness grant him everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. For as much as God has taken out of the world the soul of our departed veterans, 
he therefore commit his body to the ground to sleep, and his soul to endless peace to rest. The dust returned to earth as it was.